Hello everybody, it's Russ back here, uh, another edition, the Better Cross with Barker video series, the mid-September 2019 edition. Today we're going to be addressing that uh, question that has been asked a lot the last uh, 10 days to 2 weeks. We're in a fairly heavy livestock uh, density, a lot of dairy dairy clients that we work with, and a lot of dairymen have been coming up and saying, when do you think this crop's going to finally be ready to start uh, thinking about cutting corn silage? Well, it's not complicated, fellas. Remember, most years, if you think back, uh, when you uh, think about your corn development, when you tassel corn in late July, when did you start harvesting corn silage? Yeah, somewhere in that second week of September. Now, we're in the second week of September and corn isn't ready yet, but remember when you flowered. Uh, and this will develop, this will depend, of course, on planting date and hybrid choice. But at the end of the day, if you think back to when you flowered, if you flowered the first part of August, anywhere from that 10th to the 15th, 16th, 17th, somewhere in there, you are going to be ready to cut. This corn's going to be ready to cut for corn silage on or about 1st of October. End of September, first few days of October is going to be a pretty close timing uh, from a calendar point of view. You take pollination at six weeks, you need to be ready uh, to go and start really looking a lot closer to pick the particular day that you want to start uh, from both a plant development point of view, weather, threats, and all that other stuff. If you flower at the end of August, which there was corn around here, done full season corn, 3200 unit corn that was planted in June. It didn't really pollinate until the, the end of, uh, of August. That corn is going to be more or less ready somewhere 10th, 15th of October, somewhere in that uh, second week. In other words, about two weeks later. It still pretty much works on a, on a clock basis uh, from a corn size point of view. And those are the dates that you want to start zeroing in on. Now, how do you determine whether that date is the, uh, is the right day to work? Well, Pioneer has done a lot of work on corn silage over the years, not only from a yield and, and, and quality point of view, but from a nutritional point of view as well. A tremendous amount of work. We have dairy research folks that have been on staff for years. They've taught a dumb cropper like me really how corn silage uh, develops, optimum harvest points of corn silage, storage uh, considerations, feeding nutritional considerations, not that I'm a nutritionist, far from it, but I do kind of have a basic understanding of uh, corn silage and corn hybrid nutrition with respect to ruminant uh, production. So uh, what they've told me over the years and conversations with uh, independent uh, nutrition that work in the industry as well tends to line up pretty good. So when it get back to when this corn is at the right stage, the best, still the best determinant my fact, in my point of view, is kernel milk line descent and it's not hard to figure out kernel milk line descent you just take a kernel and you chew on it this corn i'm in right now was planted the, the first of june it's a 3200 unit hybrid good high yielding p0414 uh, and its milk line is just starting to move okay just starting to move you can start to 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 feel it at the end the, 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 the sugars are starting to convert, as we talked about before, the sugars are starting to convert to starch. Uh, and as that milk line descends, the key point where maximum yield, maximum quality, optimum harvest moisture is right at about that three-quarter milk line descent. You want to give this plant some time because for every day that uh, it is allowed to stand out here, and we've got some gorgeous weather coming here through the end of September. For every day in these nice uh, warm days, warm nights that are looking ahead, uh, this plant will pack on anywhere from one, excuse me, half a point to a full point of starch per day. And that's critical for energy density in corn silage, milk production, beef production. Uh, the, the starch content is, is a huge energy driver. And, and that's why yield, that's why grain yield still is a very, very important consideration in corn silage uh, hybrid selection. <clears throat> the other thing, if you let corn mature a little bit longer, people say, well, sometimes doesn't that stock get kind of woody? Not really. Fiber digestibility declines much more slowly than starch accumulation. Than starch accumulation. In other words, your starch accumulation going like this, your fiber digestibility is going like this, and that is the other reason, really, why you want to, uh, to zero in on that three-quarter milk line zone. You can take your plants in and do chipper days and check all that stuff out, and that's fine. That helps a little bit. 
but when you really want to dial it in, look at milk line. Mm -hmm. The other thing, Pioneer has done a lot of work in corn silage, a, a tremendous amount of work. I don't think we get credit for it all the time, but uh, and I'm biased, I know that. But anyway, let's let's talk about what they do. I'm actually standing here in a local silage evaluation plot that our research team out of uh, the Tavistock Research Center uh, has planted. There's hundreds of hybrids in here that they're evaluating from both a yield and a quality point of view to enhance our understanding of individual hybrid performance with respect to corn silage. And it's from plots like this that we, uh, we, they provide us the background information that allow us to understand which hybrids in our lineup uh, have, uh, have some silage, uh, good silage potential, right combination of maturity, right combination of tonnage, right combination of, of starch contents. Uh, and digestibilities uh, and and it's 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 been such a blessing to work for a company that uh, is able to do that so um, that's it for today silage maturity end of September first of October through to mid October at least that's what's going to happen around uh, our local area can't say for the rest of the province but that's that's my thoughts here today uh, so uh, yeah two weeks yeah, start being ready. We're gonna need. We're gonna be uh, be right in there. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Take care.